Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to look at file read, directory traversal vulnerabilities, and interacting with the file descriptors in the PROC file system. Um, this actually comes on a question I got from someone uh, following the retirement of Heal, the Hack the Box machine. And on this machine, there's an API with a file read vulnerability. Um, and the intended path is to uh, find the configuration for the uh, Ruby application, and then use that to find the location of the SQLite database, download the SQLite database, get a user's hash, crack the hash, move on from there. And uh, I got an email from Oxirus. I'll throw up on the screen here. Um, and basically, uh, their friend and they were looking at uh, this vulnerability, and they didn't go to the Ruby config. And instead, they started ending up in the proc file system fuzzing around, and they found proc self fd15. And when they read from this, Boom, there's Ralph's hash, and they're able to continue from there. And basically, they thought, like, this is interesting, but we don't quite understand why this is working. Um, so, OX Cirrus and uh, friend R2, uh, shout out to you all. Um, I thought this would be fun to explore. So, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, I will pop myself over here, and uh, I've got the website here. Uh, I believe I already have an, I don't think I've reverted this box since I've last solved it. So, I think we can solve, log in. Sweet, we can. And uh, we get the, this is a resume builder application. Um, I can fill out some stuff here and, you know, put things in here. It doesn't really matter, but eventually I want to push export as PDF and uh, boom, I get a PDF here. And so you can see like, there's the stuff I put in and it's a pretty resume, right? Um, that's the point of the website. Uh, if we come over into Burp, which I always have running, um, I've got a proxy proxy set up by patterns and anything hack the boxish will just go through Burp. Uh, I got a video showing that I'll put a link somewhere. Um, but basically, let's see, let's come down here. And after we sign in, uh, boom, we do post exports. Oh, I think we have to, let's make sure we turn on all this stuff here. Um, that got me the first time of solving this. Uh, post, so we do post exports with all this HTML stuff. And then we do a get to download and boom, there's our PDF. And I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to repeater. And what's cool here is just to show you, we can do Etsy password like that. And we get Etsy password. So we have, we have a file. Um, now, what we got from Oxirus and R2 was uh, we can go into, let's see, proc self fd15 uh, 15 and hit run. And we've got basically the SQLite database right here. Um, let's see if we can scroll down. Here we go. This looks like, uh, that looks like me, but here's Ralph at, uh, right here. Got a hash. So we, we, we're done. We can move on. Um, why does this happen? Why, what, what's going on here? Let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna, I got a root shell here. I've already rooted the box. I'm just coming back to peek at it. And so we're gonna go into uh, slash proc. Now, when I do proc self, that is the current process. Um, if we go into, let's see, let's pick up a thing here and go into, I don't know, 205, just picking one at random here. Uh, is there a way to, yeah. what if I do, I don't know if there's a way to get the oh the PID the the PID is the directory. So there's not like a good way to tell what what process we're running is. Um, if we do, we could look at the process list to figure out. Um, what I actually we know is from a little bit of an analysis is that this is running um, Puma, which is a Ruby web server for a Ruby application. Um, and so I can see my two cluster workers. So it's almost certain that I'm in one of these two 52, 50, 7542 or seventy five forty six. Um, so we'll just pick one of those and go into 7546 and we'll look at FD and boom, there is 15, 16, 17. There's some other handles here that are not open. If we do an LS minus L, we can, that's not what I wanted, LS minus L on FD. Uh, we can see that there's other things going on here. Um, but let's step back for a second. Let's talk about this. What, what is, what is the proc file system? And basically Linux represents everything, every process, all the information about the process is stored right here in the proc slash pit, whatever the pit is folder. Um, so we can see things like uh, if we cat uh, command line, uh, not that, cat, not cd, uh, cmd line like that. We can see that what's, what is showing up in the process list. That's that uh, Puma cluster worker. Where was that right here? That's exactly what this is right here. It's coming out of that command line. Um, if we do things like uh, cat environ, um, this is a little bit messy, but you can see the environment variables. Um, it turns out they're null separated. I'm going to go on a little tangent here, but if we do uh, xxd, you can see, let's see if we can find one of these here. Um, surely there's something in here. There's a null. Um, 
no morale. Oh, because I'm in the path. The path's long. Both topic. Shell, bin, bash, and boom. They're right there. That null right there. Uh, RVM path right there. But that's a null. Oh, that's actually a dot. Sorry. Uh, that one, maybe? Anyway. Oh, this path one's going to be long. Right here before RV shell. I bet there's a null. Yep, so there's a null. So um, when you look at this, what I usually tend to like to do is just do a TR uh, backslash like that, and then do a like that. And that didn't work. Let's see. Do I need to put quotes on it? There we go. And now I've got uh, environment variables printed out nicely like that. You can take a look at them. Um, what else do we have in here? Um, we can actually see things like how memory is mapped out. So we call uh, cat maps, oops, maps, oops, map. And see, these, this is how memory is lap, mapped out within the process. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, the thing, oh, if we can do uh, these things like exe and current working directory, so root analyst L minus L and exe, we see that actually points to slash home slash rel uh, Ruby versions bin Ruby. So this is Ruby running. Okay. Um, if we do an uh, LX minus LD or DL, that should work, on current working directory, we can see that it points to slash home slash rel slash resume API. So we can see the, you know, this is actually a sim link to the working directory. This is a sim link to the binary that's running. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. We're particularly interested right now in the FD. So if we do an LS on FD, uh, we can even go in here. Uh, there's all these file descriptors. And I started looking at those earlier. Um, basically, whenever you open a file, like like zero and one and two are always gonna be standard standard in, standard out, and standard error. Um, and then there's all these other files that just get opened over the course of uh, course of handling sockets, handling things, and these all get stored here. Some of these things are just kind of dead now, which is why they're red. Um, but other ones, you know, you can see right here, we have a handle to this SQLite, and there's actually three of them, because when you open a SQLite database, you open the main file and then it creates these two temporary files that goes along with it to handle updates and then periodically they're merged back in um, beyond the scope of this video, but that's why there's three different handles here. And we can do things like cat uh, 15 and boom, we are printing out, we are reading directly out of that database. And that's basically what's going on here. Um, one other thing to think about, let's see, um, what's my other one? Was it 42 was the other one? Uh, 75, 42, see if that works out. Um, ls minus l, actually, let's make sure it's Ruby. Okay, so that, that, we're the same one, ls minus FD. I wonder if it's going to work. Okay, um, there might be times, it's worth thinking about, um, where this, maybe, maybe I might have to log out of the website or something, but it's possible that you come in here and this is not, that 15, 16, 17 aren't there. And the reason might be the website is not currently using those handles and it might be opening and closing those handles as time goes on or as there's interactivity with it. Um, but when, What's cool is whenever I do this download, it's going to authenticate, which is going to cause database activity, which is going to open the handle. So by the time it gets to reading proc self FD15, it's just going to be there. Um, I think that's it. Just a quick video to sort of explain what's going on in the proc file system. There's so much cool stuff there. Um, I guess one of the things worth taking a look at real quick before we go. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. What was it? 7546. Um, there are some things that are kind of painful about this. Um, I've gotten some videos and blogs about this before, but you know, if I want to read, uh, one thing you might say is like, oh, so I'm here, why don't I just read like proc self command line? Uh, and we can try that. I'm pretty sure I tried that on this box and it didn't work. Um, it returns okay, but then there's no, the result is there's zero. And the reason that happened, I believe a lot of the time, if we do an ls minus l, um, we can see almost so many of these files are size zero or reported by the operating system. Um, Almost all of these files are size zero reported by the operating system. Um, I wonder what the size is on the minus L FD. Um, these are not. These are these act. Oh, okay. Come back to that. Um, so you can see how because they're size zero, when Ruby Python has the same problem, goes to read from this file, it says, oh, "Okay, let me read. I'm going to read from this file. I need I need to read zero bytes, and then it reads zero bytes and it's stuff." And so even though these are not because these are not really files, they're piece, they're like interfaces to the operating system and how it's working. So they report as zero bytes, and that throws off Python, that throws off Ruby, um, etc. Uh, that's why you can't. That it's often hard to read some of these files. Um, you can see now we have we're back at a point now where we have no uh, 15 there um, in the file directory. So just I was mentioning that earlier. If I come here and rerun this, and once again, 15, 16, 17 are back. 
that's because the web server just started interacting with the with interacting with the database again and needed handles again. And those handles will close after some period of inactivity. So uh, that's it today. Thank you so much, OX Cirrus and uh, their friend R2 for sending me the question. And uh, I'll talk to you next time.